Capital. He is with me now from his glorious office in Boston. Um, so, Q1 comes to an end. Uh, it could have been a great deal worse with the banking uh, crisis, but it seems as if the ship is steady. I agree, Richard. Uh, I think the uh, government stepped in and did all the right things. Uh, I think I've got to give them a lot of credit uh, because this was a banking crisis really caused by a lack of confidence, uh, almost like a classic run, not a run because banks had made terribly bad investments, a run because of accounting issues in terms of uh, long-term and short-term debt on their balance sheets causing write-offs. So fundamentally, uh, this wasn't a situation like it was in 2008 where, where there were a lot of bad investments made and banks didn't have capital. Banks had plenty of capital, but there was a crisis in confidence and they did all the right things in to stop the run. The thing that's troubled me over the last few weeks, of course, is what you do in these situations in terms of the insured and the uninsured uh, deposits. Um, at $250,000, dollars just about anybody on silicon valley will have had more and small businesses did have more so what do you think you do in those situations um everybody look uh, we all know the moral hazard argument but at the same time you can't have small businesses can't pay in their payroll yes and i think moral hazard uh, did come into play here because the executive of, of these banks lost all the equity and lost their jobs. So that's a pretty harsh penalty for for for, for what's happened. Um, and and banks are the lifeblood of small businesses. You can't have those deposits disappear. And again, the uh, the FDI insurance was set up for exactly this situation to, to kind of fill in the gaps and to prevent these runs. And so I think they had to guarantee the funds of the small businesses and it was the right thing to do. Uh, and it really wasn't a windfall for for bankers or, or corporations that they took huge losses on it. So. Um, I think the right things happened, and uh, right. and hopefully it will continue to, to stabilize. Was it the right thing for the Swiss National Bank to prioritize equity over bonds for the ATIs? You know, I can't comment on that, uh, you know, their, their national policies, uh, but the, the, the primary directive would be to stabilize those banks in Switzerland, and, and you couldn't have a situation where there was a run on a, on a fairly, you know, global bank. Um, the banks here in the U.S., J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, very well run, very well capitalized. And ironically, uh, you know, th th that's where a lot of deposits went. Uh, if you remember the last <laughs> crisis, the large banks, many of the large banks had very stable. So this now, really is a situation about, about saving uh, niche banks that, uh, that suffered because of a lack of diversification. Now, you've got a, over your right shoulder... You have a, the equity and the capital. You look at that globe and you think, ah, which bits do I like? What parts of the world are of interest to me at the moment? So what do you like at the moment? Well, I think uh, India continues to be a very strong grower and, uh, and their governmental policies have been very pro-business. And so uh, Bain Capital has a fantastic operation in India, seeing lots of opportunities. Uh, I would also say in general, you know, biotech and tech, which have taken a beating in this latest market run are starting to come back up. And, uh, you know, tech and biotech are going to be 20 year trends for us. And 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 that kind of transcends uh, the globe. There, there, are, there are opportunities in Europe, there are opportunities in the U.S., opportunities in Asia. Um, and I think right. Japan is an interesting place to invest as well, um, because they are they're going towards a more, you know, market stock driven economy, classic economy. Um, ver, ver, and, and, and those policies right. have been positive as well. Right. So I just did a quick Google search on your name um, and football clubs, and Bloomberg has a title, Bain, Stephen Berglucia, eyes more England football deals. Manchester Evening News says, who is Stephen Berglucia? Boston Celtics co-owner profiled amid Manchester United takeover talks. And another one says, Berglucia wants a European team. So... Do you? And which one? Uh, you know, Richard, we're, we're, we have a, a sports group, at a PAGS group, and we're looking at many opportunities out there. As you know, uh, I was one of the final bidders for Chelsea and, and got, had a huge appreciation for the Premier League. So we're looking at several opportunities, and uh, we try to look at them to say, if we do them, you know, you know, how can we sustain them? Can we win? What are the economics like? And, and uh, we can't comment on any specific one, but there are a lot of interesting clubs out there for sale right now. And we have Atalanta uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Syria, 
and that's doing very well. We've had a great relationship with the Procasis who are, who are uh, really lifting that club up as well. I look forward to your next move and development. It's good to see you, sir. I wish you a good weekend. Thank you very much.